So the most common affected breeds are Doberman Pinchers, Boxers, and then also giant breeds such as Great Dane, Irish Wolfhound, St. Bernard's, Newfoundlands. We talked briefly about the American Cocker Spaniel and also European Cocker Spaniels, um, Dalmatians, and then a special thing can be seen in Portuguese water dogs, which will develop um, the disease as puppies, and then they, de they usually die um, very fast from that disease before they are eight, nine months old. On that table, you basically can see an overview over the most commonly uh, affected breeds in a study from UK where they looked at 369 cases and you can see that in Dobermans um, the disease was the most prevalent followed by boxes, Great Danes, Cocker Spaniels and then German Shepherds, St. Bernards, Labradors and so on. If we look at the male to female ratio in that slide from the previously mentioned study from the UK, you can see that it appears that the male dogs have a predominance in almost all breeds. Um, also, in, according to that study, for example, in Dobermans, but we will come back to that, that um, in Dobermans it appears to be that male and female dogs are um, equally affected, but they have a different disease progression. So now we will talk about some breed specifics. So let's talk about Cocker Spaniels. So there was a great study from the US from 1997 where they looked at Cocker Spaniels with dilated cardiomyopathy. And what they found in that study was when they gave taurin and carnitin to these dogs, um, they actually responded to that. And most of these dogs actually had after a few months um, a normal heart again or at least a huge improvement. So this was a very important study. The disease in Cocker Spaniels is actually in the literature as taurin and carnitin responsive cardiomyopathy. However, in reality, what we found during the last years is always that they respond to taurin supplementations alone and you don't need carnitin to supplement. So it appears to be a taurin solely responsive disease in the Cocker Spaniel. But it is really, really important that if you have a Cocker Spaniel with dilated cardiomyopathy, that you try to measure taurin in the plasma of the blood to diagnose a taurin deficiency. And then if you supplement that, um, it is um, a disease that is reversible. So taurin deficiency is a very important cause of cardiomyopathy in Cocker Spaniels. But in the last few years, it's actually also known that taurin deficiency can occur also in other breeds. For example, in golden retrievers, in Newfoundlands, in Dalmatians on a UD diet, if they are longer on that diet, we see that also sometimes on, in dogs um, that are on homemade diets that are not very well balanced. Um, or, as I said before, if the dogs are fed lamb and rice diets. Don't take me wrong, not every dog on lamb and rice is at risk to develop dilated cardiomyopathy. However, if you diagnose a dog with dilated cardiomyopathy in one of these breeds, it is probably a wise decision to look for taurine deficiency, as we are always hoping for an underlying cause that we can treat and reverse the disease. So let's talk about the next breed, Great Danes. So dilated cardiomyopathy is actually quite common in Great Danes. A recent study reported a prevalence of about 35%. The disease appears to be more commonly detected in male dogs compared to female dogs. And until recently, it was suspected to be an X chromosome recessive mode of inheritance. Just recently, it was suspected to be an autosomal uh, dominant uh, transmission. So, it is also in the literature that atrial fibrillation can be an early sign of the disease in Great Danes or a sign of advanced disease. Again, just recently it was found that ventricular premature contractions, so VPC, appear to be actually also quite common in Great Danes with DCM. Let's talk about the next breed, which would be the Irish Wolfhound. 
That is reported to have a prevalence of about 30% and a little bit higher um, prevalence in male dogs compared to female dogs. The disease usually is diagnosed when, there are, when the dogs are middle-aged, so around four years. The very interesting thing about Irish wolfhounds and DCM is that after the diagnosis, it appears that they live forever. Um, and they had, a, according to one study, um, a median survival time after the diagnosis after six years. Often they die from other diseases such as osteosarcoma. What's very special about um, Irish Wolfhound is also that atrial fibrillation can occur as an early sign in Irish Wolfhounds. So if you do an echo in the early stages, you will see no changes. So those dogs often have only atrial fibrillation and the disease can progress. However, it should be noted that atrial fibrillation can be also lone atrial fibrillation and it, these dogs might never develop DCM at a later time point. Next breed would be the boxer. And it used to be a disease that is called boxer cardiomyopathy. Just recently, um, the disease was actually renamed as ARVC, which means arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So this is a disease where fatty infiltrates replace myocytes in the um, right ventricle and later they can progress to the left ventricle as well. And that is a disease that is very important in humans. Um, it is a very important cause of sudden death, for example, in young athletes. So some humans have the same disease and there it is called ARVC, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. And this is the reason why we call that disease, which is very similar in the boxer dog, the same as in humans. There are basically two forms of ARVC. So we can see one form where the dogs only have ventricular arrhythmias. So the owner thinks these dogs are completely normal. But if we search for the disease, for example, with a 24 hour ECG, we can detect several hundreds or sometimes thousands of ventricular premature contractions. These VPCs can further on go to ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, which would be then a cause for syncope if the dog is lucky. If the dog is not so lucky, the first and last sign would be sudden death. Some of these dogs actually progress to develop the classical form of the dilated cardiomyopathy where they also have um, a decreased contractility, so a severe systolic dysfunction, and then secondary, this dilation of the heart. So we have two forms in the boxer dogs. Boxer dogs actually have a very typical form of ventricular premature contractions. The typical thing about that is that these VPCs are upright in lead two, as you can see on that slide, and they have a so-called left bundle branch block pattern. 